United Way contracted with the Women's Fund to have a demonstration pilot program for six months for transporting elderly people to their doctor's appointments. So they designed a 1-800 number that linked you to a um, person that said, where do you live, what do you need to do, and all this kind of stuff, and pick the very best service for you. And so all of that was rolled into one. The Regional Planning Commission adopted that and put it in their transportation implementation plan as the model um, resource center for that yeah. lesson. So, of course, our funding ran out and we could only do the demonstration thing. We had hoped then that by some miracle that there would be a 20% local match come forward and the Regional Planning Commission would help uh, get all that together. We would get 80% match from the federal government for that. Did it happen? No. Why? Because our Constitution, which is the root of all of the terrible issues and, and it's just a knotted ball. Our state constitution says that tax on gas, state tax on gas, can only be used for roads and bridges. The Alabama road builders love it that way. They're an extremely strong lobby. So then we can't get the federal match that we need to really improve our transit system as a whole. We can't get any regional cooperation. It's all about turfism and this is my fiefdom. We can't live that way anymore. We're fighting hard for 280 not to be elevated and part of the solution is to have transit, public transit. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have light rail? Oh no, we pay four cents federal tax on each gallon of gasoline we buy here and you know where it goes because we don't invest in public transit? To any other state that's building light rail, Salt Lake City, Tempe, Arizona, we've been on both of those systems. They're fabulous, but we give away four cents on every gallon because we will not come up with a match, a 50% match from our state. I've We're not going anywhere. Pardon? I've never heard that before. We're not going anywhere. We're just not going anywhere. We cannot build enough lanes on 280 to take care of the traffic. Here we are in the fastest growing region and the fastest growing county in Alabama. Uh, where it really hits close to home with my district um, is that it, the Shelby County Commissioners, all they can do is pass resolutions. They don't have any power. They spent $90,000 on a study using our tax money in this district to, uh, well, in, in Shelby County, $90,000 for a study to build access roads on the new parts of 280 that are developing, Chelsea and all of that. They asked the Shelby County legislation, the delegation, the legislators, to help push this through LDOT and get those roads built before all this commercial property went up and down. They didn't do it. That was in 2006. 2006. Never did it. And the Shelby County commissioners say, as long as we do not have home rule, which allows us to be more powerful than LDOT and to make decisions for our own people and pass laws, et cetera, et cetera, they don't have as much power as a little municipality. That's why these little municipalities keep popping up. So until the commissioners of each county have home rule, and each county has home rules so that they can pass laws closest to the people. They're at the closest level to the pieces. We're not going to get anywhere. And it is so frustrating. So frustrating. So if, you're, if your legislation, if your legislative delegation is not pushing against the most powerful force, ALDOT, to look at your solution, to traffic on 280, and then they come back around and say they got to do this elevated highway. This is not working together. This is not benefiting the people of Alabama. It, it didn't take me very long to be in Alabama before I realized that this Constitution drafted, created in 1901, is just really where everything gets tangled up. Good legislators 
want to see that undone because it holds the power in the hands of a few.